we are back today is tuesday it is seven o'clock and you know what i'm gonna check something here i share okay i oh, think she I just think got she just got her she just got her book <laughs> Just Is that what you said? <laughs> no, if Amazon, Amazon notifies me once someone gets a book, it'll say Ooh. they just got a book. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so it's outside her door. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. So Tasha, Tasha, Ta uh, Latasha. Let's do the yeah, formal Latasha's name. Good, you know. <laughs> On the book, A Winning Season. You have tuned in to another broadcast of Stories with Keishan, Ordinary People with Extraordinary Lives. And if you missed last week, you're going to have to go on YouTube, check the podcast out because it was a treat. But it didn't stop last week because we are now into this week and we have again joining us to continue telling her story of how she is now walking in her winning season. Get this book by <laughs> Latasha McGlo or Cla uh, Crawford McLaughlin. I don't know why. I get tongue-tied when I say that. I know. I need to shorten the name. <laughs> you know, it's all good. I used to be hyphenated, but I'm just me now. So anyways, <laughs> this is the book. And last week, if you missed it, like I said, go to YouTube, go to the podcast, Stories with Keishan on SoundCloud, and type in or go to last week but like i said i have with joining me again for part two of a winning season is none other than the perseverance determination focus minded woman of god latasha crawford mclaughlin thank you so much for joining me again it's a pleasure it's a pleasure you know i am humbled that you i am you offered to have me on your show so I'm the one that's humbled. Look, you got a story to share. And people, yeah. have you seen the comments people were making? But even since then, people are still talking about how they were blessed by listening to your story, how you overcame all this stuff. And now that you've overcome the molestation, the teen pregnancy, marriage at an early age, stroke at 25. Uh, and I wish I could. There's a picture of Tasha, her before and after. And if you saw the before and you see clearly the beautiful woman that she is today, you will be like, oh my gosh, just like the, the ugly it. duckling and the swan. You have just right. transformed. And I'll go, I'll go for that because that's exactly that's exactly how I felt. You know, I was at a point, like I told you, I, I basically had given up. And um it, it's odd that how you, you give up your whole being kit will disfigure. And, and to me, even in that picture, which I'm going to try to find, um, I don't even, I mean, I look disfigured. I well, mean, you look, you can tell the face was you, but to see you now, I mean, for anybody, if, if you've ever struggled with, anything, whether it's your appearance, whether it's your finances, your self-esteem, you look at this picture of Tasha and it is going to encourage you. It encouraged me. I was like, oh my gosh, look at this just amazing woman that she has taken the bull by the horns and said, I'm about to do this. So Tasha, tell us your, I won't say secret sauce, but I told people to come prepared with a pen and paper so that they can take some notes so that they will be able to get unstuck. And what we're going to do towards the end is comments that people have made, questions that people have. We'll be able to read them at that point, answer those questions then. So stay tuned. Um, but Tasha, all the stuff that you were going through, what were you thinking in those moments? Um, and let's start as an adult, because pretty much everybody who's watching should be an adult. How did right. you, what was your motivation? What was your, I guess, what was the trigger for you 
that led you to coming out of that hole, coming out of that uh, depression and everything that was going on in your life? Well, you would have thought when the doctor told me to get my affairs in order, I had six months, something would have said, oh, no, I'm not ready for this. Um, but that that didn't do it. Um, as we talked before. Um, and how old were you, know, you at that time? I had to be, oh, goodness. Um, 44, 45. So your doctor told you, yeah. Um, yeah. So just like uh, when God told, or Hezekiah found out that he had, he was about to be on his deathbed and got to get your stuff in order. <laughs> right. One of those conversations. And, you know, I, I walked out the, the doctor's office. This is how, you know, you're listening to someone, you do, you hear them, but you don't hear. Them. I had to go back in and, and ask him, can you, can you explain what that means? <laughs> it's like, you, obviously you've given up. And I mean, your, you know, your kidneys are shutting down. Um, mm. you're, I mean, like I said, I was on so many different medications, just kind of being keeping me going. Um, my average blood pressure on a day-to-day -day basis was like 160 over 110. I mean, that that was the norm. And so he said, "Okay, you just really even with medication." So okay, it, yeah, I was in a pretty bad state. Um, but I but you were overweight as well, right? extremely overweight. I was going to try to post, I don't think I could post it on um, this feed, but maybe I could post it on your page as a photo. I think I might be able to do that. Yeah, I'll um, try it too. Yeah. Um, but I had given up. And like I said, I was laying on my couch and, and God told me to move. I'm in clear, you know, how you hear a voice and I really can't explain the voice. But I was the only one there, there in the room at the time. Mm -hmm. And I started moving. From that day on, I, I started to move. So you and were like, in all aspects of my life, I started to move. <laughs> so you were physically on the couch, heard this voice audible say, audible. you move. And you were like, okay, what, what made you know that you needed to take action at that moment? Because I wasn't moving. I, I was mm. sedentary. I had stopped every, pretty much everything. I mean, I really wasn't socializing with friends, family. Um, I just kind of isolated myself. Um, I did the things I needed to do because my son was, I still had a son at home. So I would do those things, but basically it was kind of go to the couch. You know, my body's hurting. I just don't feel well, you know, but I started to move. And the other thing mm. I started to do is stop talking about my illness. That was the second thing. I stopped talking about it. I stopped, you know, oh God, I don't feel good. Oh, my legs hurt, my knees hurt. I, you know, I stopped that too. Um, okay. So like I said, I, I honestly, after I heard that voice, I, I, I got actually got up and tried to walk. But of course I had limitations. I didn't get very far. And um, I kind of sat and rested and turned around and walked back. It wasn't even a half a block. I couldn't even walk a half a block without uh, you know, feeling tired and weak and in pain at that time. Um, wow. But I stopped talking about it too, feeding into all that negativity of the woe is me. Mm. Um, you know, I'm just, this is the way that it is. And, it, you know, the acceptance of what that, the doctor physician had told me, I just, I changed my whole mindset when it came to that. That's interesting because a few podcasts ago or a few broadcast ago, I talked about that self-pity. I talked about mm. being in the moment of just accepting and allowing life to to own you and control you instead of saying, ah, uh -uh. I'm not mm. going to feed into the negativity. I am going to take action. And I even shared how I've lost, I think, 23 pounds. Oh, and, girl, and, and, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> Within the last year, and some of it was stress related, you know, with the sickness that my dad was going through and, you know, um, it ended up taking his life. But it in those moments of self-pity, I'm like, oh, I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to lay down. I just want to sleep and those different things like that. But you got up, you moved, but you said not only physically, 
your your location moved, your mind shifted. And there was at one point where you talked about you had gone, you had to file for bankruptcy. Absolutely. Cause I, so I, now is this before or after that moment? Um, I had actually filed for bankruptcy after that moment. I just kind of mm. did a whole new rebuild. I mean, because I was like, oh, no, I'm not, I didn't really, it's not like I didn't care, but I was very limited because I honestly could not work. So for a short period of time, I had to draw, I was immediately accepted for social security because of my, my medical condition. So mm. I was not able to work. Um, and and so what medical I, condition is that? I have um, systemic lupus, SLE. Systemic lupus. Okay. Lupus. So what is that? Because I've heard lupus of people. It's an autoimmune. It's an autoimmune disorder, and it affects every major, pretty much every major organ in your body. Um, that's why um, every, like my joints, um, my kidneys, was all everything is affected by that. Mm. It was. I don't. Let me correct the, the way that I term it because. I don't claim. I hear you. Okay, that'd be my fault. Those things. (laughs) Because you said last week, you said I had lupus, and then you kept on going. You didn't miss a beat, and I'm like, Mm -hmm. "Mm-hmm. Speak it. Yeah, I, I don't claim it anymore. Okay. I just simply just don't. Okay. And I don't. I mean, I don't take. uh, I was on hydrochloroquine, which is the medication used for lupus. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking it since the day I started moving. Really? Yeah, I'm not taking the medication. So I, are I'm they- telling s- anybody not to stop taking your medication. Let me make sure that we get that right. Correct. Disclaimer, disclaimer. Disclaimer, <laughs> right. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> I'm not telling you to not stop taking your medication, but I, I stopped taking any of the, those medications. I started using okay. you know, supplements and eating right. I changed the way that I ate. Uh, it wasn't overnight. It was. Just like that little walk, half a block. Yeah. It was step by step. So now in your book, A Winning Season, mm-hmm. you have different journal uh, opportunities for people to complete, to mm-hmm. talk about. And you even here have a cleansing exercise. Mm hmm for you to take notes. Talk about that for a little bit. What does that mean, a cleansing exercise? Because I think in order for you to move on from whatever state you're in, whether it's a financial state, a relational state, um, whatever it is, um, and then like when I said, even like in my physical element state, you gotta cleanse yourself from everything. Mm. You have to let it go. And, and and let it stay where that is and while you journey now into that new season of where you're trying to go. Because if you start taking that baggage into what you're trying to accomplish or move away from, you'll you'll keep going. We talked about this kind of off calendar. I mean, off, off camera, you, you'll keep going in that circle, continuously mm-hmm. in that circle, because you'll go back to what's familiar. So mm-hmm. the cleanse is, I'm allowing myself to feel and express how I felt in this moment or how I how I felt, but I will never allow myself to go back to that state ever, ever again. Oh, wow. How do you stay out of it? You don't go, I, what What are you talking about? We, lupus, I don't have lupus, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I had lupus. I had okay. Lupus. Yeah, my credit was bad. It's not bad anymore, honey. You know, it, we just, you, you, you make, you make these changes and you just don't go back. And it, of course, you have to make changes. It's not just in the way that what you say, but it has to also be actionable in your actions, the way that you manage things differently. Um, I had to manage things differently. I had to put down those bag of chips and ice mm. cream and the things that were unhealthy. I mean, a lot of the processed foods we eat aren't unhealthy. I actually started a garden, a pot garden in my in my yard at that time. A um, garden? Girl, yeah. So I yes, I learned. I took a master's garden class at the library because I'm, you know, I'm a pers- person of resources. Because your your okay. library has all types of classes for you to take. And yes, so we grew our like our own vegetables, and I started eating kind of very natural. Um, I grew pretty much everything that I ate. 
at that time. So how do you, because you, you talked about two different things. You talked about your finances. Well, you talked about your health and changing the negative environment, changing the words, changing your mindset. Mm -hmm. And now I mean, sometimes it's changing people too. Mm -hmm. Cause I've said that before and you know, people, they might look and at it's me. Not a bad, <laughs> yeah. And it's not a bad thing. It's not like the people that you're with are bad, but sometimes mm -hmm. people you're with are enablers, meaning girl, mm -hmm. you're fine. You're okay. No, you're not okay. And you need someone to tell you that you, when you're not okay, that's the kind of people that you need in your life. Yeah. Your, your, your Tasha, your finances are jacked up, sweetheart. I don't have $20 or $25 to loan you. But what I can do is get you, get you some resources in order to so that you can make your life be a lot better. OK, that's what a real friend I need for you to cry. We're going to cry about this relationship, but you got 24 to 48 hours to cry. And I'm going to cry with you, but we're going to move on. OK, that's what you know what I just thought of when you said that I just saw a video and I've shared this before. I watched Instagram and, follow, you know, different stories. So there was a lady on Instagram and her daughter was going through cancer. She had gone through mm -hmm. chemotherapy and of course she started losing her hair. Mm -hmm. And so she's shaving her daughter's head and she had got halfway up and then she started shaving her own and her daughter's looking in the wow. mirror. And so she went through that journey with her. So you, by you saying that just triggered that. Sometimes you have to just cry with somebody, okay. You got 24 to 48 hours. Let's do this. Let's try this and out. Let's do this. Let's get our whatever. You know, I'm not I'm not perpetuating wine or anything like that. You can get some tea, coffee, whatever you need to do. But hey, we're going to sit down and have our cry out, our ugly faces, whatever we need to do. And I'm going to do this with you. But then we got to have a plan of action after we come out of this. We can't stay where we are. We're going to have to we have to move on. And, you know, those are the people that you need when you are going through those type of transition otherwise you will stay because the, again people will enable you know you know she's sick and she just doesn't feel well she doesn't shouldn't walk she should oh stay gosh. yeah and you know she's so you know just leave her alone no you need to get up and you need to move you know what jennifer jennifer lopez she shared mm -hmm. a story when I don't know what situation it was a situation in her life that she told her mom, she was like, I can't do this. And her, she said her mom looked her dead in her eye and said, if you think you're going to make it in this industry, you're going to have to develop some tough skin. And she <laughs> right? said that was the turnaround for her where she mm -hmm. was like, you're right. So I agree with you. People stay stuck. People, like you said, they, they get comfortable in, oh, I guess for lack of better words, they get comfortable in their mess. They become mm -hmm. enabled by other people. Right. And, you know, people don't want to be honest. I'm guilty of it. I've done it. Yeah, we all, I, I mean, we all do because you got to exactly. know your audience. You got to know your audience. Sometimes some people can't handle it. So you have to be, I always say you have to use a soft approach, but you mm -hmm. can still get that same message across. It's yeah. Really get that message across. Otherwise so, we're in the nation. You know? So does somebody give you these tools or is this something that you learned throughout your journey? I think learned throughout my, my journey. And okay. I, I, like I said, I had, I was lucky enough to have significant people in my life. And most of those women that were in my life were tough. They, they were pretty tough. They, you know, it was not like, Oh, you feel attached. Oh, I feel sorry. For it was, you know, it was like, Okay, figure it out. I mean, I, I didn't get the, you know, the, the cuddly, lovey, lovey, dovey. I didn't get that. It was like, okay, you pregnant at 16? Okay, what you gonna do? I remember uh, my kid's godfather's uh, mother, she probably, I don't know if she's listening, but her name is Johnetta Perkins, Anthony Perkins' mom. And she was like, um, so you're gonna have this baby. Okay, so then I need for you to put your big girl, uh, you know, panties on and you need to finish high school because I was still in high school I was in my senior year mm -hmm. and I, you need to get a plan and then she kind of like put me out of her car <laughs> she had the conversation <laughs> it was like I was like waiting for something else and that was it and 
from that point on, I knew, okay, I got to figure this out because she, that's what she said I had to do, you know? So, so how do you figure it out? Because a lot of people, they don't, they, they don't make the choices out. all the time. We talk, you know, I didn't, we have options, but I didn't always make the best options. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's trial and error. And, and again, when it's something new that you haven't experienced, sometimes you might make that wrong decision, but be smart enough. If you see that come back around to you another at another or later time that you don't make that same decision, be wise enough to make not make that same decision. So let's talk about the finances because you talked about going into bankruptcy, but what I found interesting is how you help others build their credit in that process of you know the credit cards and stuff like that because i don't think i recently started hearing about that and i was like that makes perfect sense when you help right. somebody else so let's talk about that a little bit okay so like when you're starting to read especially if you file for bankruptcy you, you're basically going to ground zero and nobody's going to give you credit let's just be real from mm -hmm. from from the start not on your own at least um so i always tell people you can go to your credit union and your and or your bank and you can get a secured loan and or a secured credit card. Those are the first two things. Um, and they'll do them as low as low as three hundred dollars. I always leave the money in the bank. I've left the money in the bank and allow the loan to pay off itself. It's my money. I, I'm taking the money to the bank and tell them I want this credit card and or this secured loan. I leave the money there. They withdraw from the account to make it automatic withdrawal and it'll, and it'll, it of course, it'll pay off the loan. You normally will pay maybe $25 in interest, but you get that constant, that positive reporting each month. The second thing that I've done is um, I have allowed, uh, you know, people, I've taken the initiative to allow people to place them on my credit. I've done it for my children, each, every single one of it. Like my son who's 22, he has an 850 credit score. But oh, one wow. of the things I've done is with my credit, and he has credit cards of his own now, but when he was 16, 17 years old, I automatically paid, you know, put him on credit cards. I did have one good credit card, never gave up my Target card, did pay that off. <laughs> <laughs> I did pay that one deal. Um, but, um, and then as I started to reestablish my credit, then I would add him onto like my different credit card that I knew, like my secured loan. I do a secured loan with him, add him on there, I automatically paid. And it'll automatically, within six months, you can go from no credit to seven twenty-seven fifty easily. Oh wow! So how many people? I mean, I'm just thinking, even for young people, even for like you mentioned, your kids to help them get you know a, a jump in, on life by doing right. something like that, adding them to your credit card and just right. allowing them they to build their the credit. Card. Right. They don't get the card. The card comes directly to you and um, they just get the positive reporting. Mm. And we all need that. We all need it. Yeah, we all need it. I mean, and it doesn't I mean, I, I don't understand why people are kind of, uh, you know, hesitant in order to do that for someone, because, again, they it's not they don't get the card. They would never send the card to the person that you're adding to your account. It always goes to the account holder. Okay. But still it gives them an opportunity to be placed on a card that has good credit and has a lower, what is it? Uh, less than 30% usage. Usage. Yeah. I keep my, okay. Usages probably, well, right now I paid off all of my debt because um, I will share here. I just put a contract down on, I built a, I'm building a house. So I just, Ooh. yeah, so it could be done, right? It could be done. Um, so we have to just make sure that uh, we keep them like you want to kind of, they say 30, but 15% is a good place because we really, if you're charging on your credit card, you should have the money to pay it off each month. That's mm -hmm. And see, again, you're learning, you've learned these by trial and error so it's trial not like somebody error. it's not like somebody gave you this book nope. and say read this book follow these instructions follow this do this at the end of the book and that's going to be your way of climbing out of the hole right 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 nope it wasn't it wasn't that at all it was trial and error it was definitely trial so then, and error how does this tie into leveled up so with leveled up 
um, especially like with young people. I've done it for like younger members in my family, um, people that I that I do. Like I said, I've taken people in once I we developed that relationship under my coaching and mentoring. And yes, I've utilized my own personal credit in order to get them where they needed to be. Um, because to me, that's what we're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. If I'm been put in a position to mentor or guide you, I have to take full accountability of that. So like I said, you have to be serious when you're doing this mm-hmm. and you're gonna have to, we have to change our behaviors, but I'm gonna be in it with you 100%. We're gonna, we're gonna finish this to the end. Wherever you're trying to get, we're gonna get it. <laughs> so do you sit down and write goals? And, and for those of you who don't know, Leveled Up is a business that Tasha has. And uh, so just getting the details of, of how that works. Now, is this leveled up specifically for youth or anybody? No, for anybody. So uh, especially right now, I'm trying to reposition how I have some of the, the, the programs that I have under leveled up because a lot of people are displaced when it comes to jobs. So we do a re-imaging as well in order to get a person into a workplace. We talked about, I think, well, offline. Um, There's so many programs out there that people don't know that will help you pay for tuition um, Mm -hmm. in order to get you to school. So I share these opportunities with them once I understand what their goal is. If we're trying to realign you in a different industry, we have to figure out what type of certifications. Now let's go look for the free money to get you because we really don't want to have to pay for this stuff. (laughs) We Mm -hmm. get it for free. Because there's right. lots of programs out there and people just simply just don't know. We, they just so, simply just so what is so say for example, if somebody is listening or watching and they're like, wait a minute, I think I need to what is this re-imaging all about? How do I connect with with her? Because I, I think I want to do this. And I'm assuming that it's not just local, but if there's anybody in the country that you can with virtually, social distancing. Right yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. So virtually I do everything right now through Zoom because of, of COVID and due to the fact that some of the people that I do coach or have coached in the past, they aren't presently in, in Texas where I am. So we 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 schedule our meetings, we have our conferences. Um, when it comes to re-imaging for a job, especially when I've learned with the younger generation is most of them, they don't even know how to go in to prepare for an interview. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to do a little research. You know, you only have a few seconds to in order to um, wow somebody to say, oh, wow. You know, they may not have the skill sets, but I like their drive, you know, yeah, like their personality. Yeah. You have to use what you have, but then you have to understand who you're interviewing. See, a lot of people don't understand that. You get ready to interview for a job. You better go try to figure out who you possibly may be interviewing with. And that mm. interview is normally somewhere on the website. And so we... I help snoop around and I get that information too. <laughs> and snoop then we around. find out, yeah, we find out what kind of possible questions they're going to ask you in the interview. And then I go over those questions with them to try to help them prepare. So what it sounds like you are doing, there are coaching. It sounds like it's coaching, life coaching. Yeah, life yeah. coaching because it covers not just one area so area. it covers like uh multi it's multifaceted coaching so yeah mm-hmm. i guess like coaching so what made you want to even go in this direction is it because of what you've gone through and you want right. to help others or what right. because some people are just in it for the money well true um no if i think that i i think not just with myself but uh, even some of the, the women that have been around me and and men I think if we've had, if we would have had someone that would have kind of taken us under that wing for an extended period of time and like, okay, look, this is what you need to do. Uh, okay, if, what's I mean, what's going on with you? The first thing is like, let's just go back to the finances. You have to understand where you are. So the first thing you need to do is pull your credit report because maybe you don't need to file for a bankruptcy. It could be like small little stuff that, you know, I, you know, I, I have letters that I have contacts with the credit bureaus. This might be something I be, might be to help you dispute and simply get it off your credit. Okay. Um, but you got to know where you are first. So like annual free credit report.com. I had no idea that I can get my free annual report, <laughs> credit report each year. <laughs> I do now. And I do 
every year. And I mean, but plus I got co credit monitoring services now in case just something mm -hmm. happens, especially with fraud that goes on. But, um, you know, but I wish that I would have had something like that. So then even when it comes to um, the money, it's based, it's situationally based. I don't have set fees. It's, let's, we negotiate those prices. Oh, so you have like a sliding scale. We have a sliding scale. And at times, depending on the circumstances, we do them for free. I can possibly, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're definitely giving back. Yeah. That's so, okay. <laughs> it is. So you have shared your story. You've shared what you've gone through. You're giving tips and tools on just different little things. If you consider this from a garden to your, your mindset, I guess starting there first, changing your mindset, decide, making a conscious decision. You know what? I'm not going to think negatively about myself. I'm not going to do negative things to my body, like eat a lot of processed foods or whatever it is that are impacting you. But not only we that, now read labels. we don't read, I read them now. But before, mm -hmm. we don't. We can't even hardly pronounce the half the things that are on on, on, on the label. Right. We, just, we just buy it because it looks good. And that's one thing that I've really been uh, cognizant of. What mm -hmm. am I eating? And I don't think I have any canned goods no. in my refrigerator or in my cupboard, my cabinet. I don't do canned goods anymore. Um, for the most part, I'm almost out of debt and everything that was in collections is all paid for. Right. And so you, you got to take those steps and you hear it like Dave Ramsey and, you know, other means that or or different tools and resources that people use. But you're you want to help people for the sake of helping them. But for people who want to bless you in the midst of getting help you know, that's a blessing in itself. So somebody may say, you know what? I want to just give you a little something. Or if you're taking it based on what and they make. That's, and that's happened. Or I've come, I've had situations where once someone, they got in that position, they come, I mean, like you said, they will come back. Mm. I mean, and or help someone else or want to help someone else go through the process. So like I said, it's, Sometimes it's been them blessing someone else. Hey, do you know anybody else that could benefit from this program? Well, I'll I'll pay for I'll I'll pay for your time. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. Wow. Well, we'll wow. we can negotiate that price too. Because to me, it shouldn't. You're gonna be blessed. I mean, I know that I've been blessed. I mean, so me giving back and giving back for free, it. it I don't see, I've not, I don't think I've sustained a loss from it, if that makes sense. Okay. okay. And that, that, I think you reap what you sow. So if you're sowing good seed, you're going to get good seed. Get good seed no matter, it, and it may not come back in the same way that you reaped it or you planted it, but rest assured it's going to come back in some shape, form, or fashion. Absolutely. So what, what are, it, what, how would you like to wrap this up before we go to see what comments and questions that we have from those who are watching and listening? I think that first of all is that you have to do face reality of wherever you are. I mm -hmm. think that's the first step. Let's face reality. Like I said, if it's bad credit, you know, you can't put those bills away and stuff them in a box when they come in. We need to pull the credit report. You need to pull your credit report and see where you are. If it is your health, um, of course, you can get your annual physical from your doctor, but realistically, we know the things, what our vices are, you know, we know what they are. Okay. And you need to come to those realizations. Um, and if it's kind of re-imaging yourself, you got to make that commitment. If it's go going back to school to get your education, I mean, I had to go back. I went back and got my bachelor's, and then I went and got went and got my master's degree, and a few certifications. You have to put in the work. You got to be willing to put in the work in order to get something back. So, 
face reality and then be willing to put in the work in order to get make sure that it happens be actionable and i think that's it right there people they don't want to put in the work or maybe it's too or they think it's too hard but anything worth having worth achieving mm -hmm. it's not going to come easy nobody going nobody's going to just drop the pot of gold in your lap and you're going to have it no you got to go out and work you got to dig for it you got to get on yeah. your hands and knees sometimes Absolutely. dig down and get you know the dirt under your fingernails you got to do what it takes to get to that point and sometimes it's long hours and you know i think about when i went back for my masters and all four of my kids were busy doing stuff. We got baseball, cheerleading, volleyball, uh, mm -hmm. basketball, the soccer. And I just had to do it. It took me, I was on the accelerator program the, um, through Cornerstone. They have a professional graduate studies program where it's one night a week, but it's like four nights and you go straight for 18 months and get it done. And I'm like, yes. So I agree. You got to do what you got to do. You got to buckle down but know that it's not going to be easy. I recently posted posted something, it was like a, a quote where it says, life is easy, life is going to be good or it's going to be bad. And it gave all these different things, but it was like, no matter what, it's either going to be good or bad, but it's going to be both. So you just need to deal with it you can't have one without the other you you reap the benefits of the good after you put in the hard work and the the toughness and the ugly part of it so absolutely. Absolutely. that's just what we got to do yeah i mean you got to put i mean that's anything in life we tell our like you said we tell our kids that all the time so even at any age if we want to change we got to be honest with ourselves and be willing yeah. to put in that work yeah make those sacrifices give up something Hey, yeah. that's that's what it's all about. Give it up. You give up something, but it's not like you're really losing anything because you gain so much. Absolutely. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So let's go to what we have here. Uh, Leonard Love. Hey, Leonard, Kim, if you guys are still on. Um, Leonard wanted to know when is the book available for order? He wants to know how so if somebody wants to get this book that I have a winning season, what do right. they need to do? Well, you can log in onto Amazon and type in a winning season in my name and you can order it directly from Amazon or you can get it on your Kindle um, if you don't want to wait for the hard copy. OK, so Kindle, Amazon, could they buy it from your website? Um, yes, you can click on that and it'll take them to the Amazon website from my well, winning season website. Yes. Good. But just like this, just like last week, <laughs> we're going to send Leonard a book since he asked. <gasps> Leonard, you go, if, if you're still listening, you get a book. So if I were you, I would uh, inbox uh, me or that. Tasha your email address. Right. Oh my goodness. Oh, and Cynthia said, good evening. I received my book today. Thank you. Oh, she's welcome. More than welcome. Yes. And hey, Diney Strickland. Do you know Diney Strickland? Uh -uh. Well, I know her. That's my cousin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Cynthia said, you can't be God giving. I know that's right. Oh, Leonard. He's going to give you a jingle. Oh, Leonard okay. won his book. Yes. <laughs> he got back on there. Okay. <laughs> and he probably was still on there, but you know, sometimes people are just yeah. stay locked in. So what are you planning in this year, 2021, that either impacts leveling up growth or just moving out of you? your comfort zone because I think they're all intertwined somehow that you right. have to do these things to get to the mm -hmm. next level. What do you have planned for this year? Now you you already talked about your home that you're getting built. Yes, yes, yes. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Okay. I'm really excited. Never had a built a home. So this is exciting for me. This is a first. Okay. Well, you know what? It's it, it's a lot of maybe a lot of firsts going on this year. Let me ask this question for those who mm -hmm maybe wanting to know and if it's too much and it's too personal be like Keisha that ain't not nobody's business okay no, so, no, talk about it. so <laughs> do you think that you will remarry 
that opportunity, if it presents itself, I always pray to God. And I am very specific this time. I've learned not not to say that anything was wrong with my first husband. That nothing at you know that's my kid's dad. I'm not going to say anything was wrong with it. But yes, I would. I mean, be definitely open to that opportunity if it is the person that God has designed for me. Amen. And I and I can be patient for that. Yeah, I can be patient for that. Yeah, because yeah. I, I know we all need to be patient for that at times because it's you know it's not that uh, I had this conversation with someone. Um, it's I think it's not that you don't. I don't find myself being lonely because I fill my time up with so many, so many different things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think once that significant that person comes into my life, it, I know that my life would probably have to make some adjustments because then that person would be the most important, well, one of the most important people in my life outside of my Lord and Savior, my children, grandchildren. Uh, you know what? <laughs> That's good because. I learned that it is important to be specific. And mm -hmm. if you look at even how God was very specific with Noah, when he mm -hmm. told him about building the ark and then, you mm -hmm. know, the temple and the details. So people are like, no, nah, God knows. But he also is a very detailed and specific God. So if you say, Lord, just a man who loved me. Now, it might be a lot of men who love you, but... Uh -huh. That's how I got that first husband. <laughs> well, what That's do you think I got, I got credit? <laughs> he <laughs> loved right. you. Right, he loved you. And we and as women, sometimes we don't, this is probably a whole nother conversation. Or men, yeah. we're not specific. Or we yeah. see something and think, oh, this is what's good for me. But is it really? We, I, now, like I said, we probably have to do this on a, a uh on another conversation. But I, I told a friend of mine, I said, you but at a certain age, you gotta look for different things. Yeah, um, because at I'll be 53 next month. So at 53, I don't know if I have the time to rebuild someone like I did when I was tw maybe tw 20 or 30. You know, I could we're going to start at ground zero, not saying that this person has to have, you know, certain income or anything like that. I'm not saying that at all. But certain things, it would be very kind of difficult at 53 for me to think, okay, um, in a couple of years, we can retire. You got a 401k or you got anything say? I mean, we gotta, gotta think about those things. No, so baby, you're gonna, gonna use your money. But <laughs> 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 I tell my girlfriends, if you choose to do that, then that's your advice. You gotta accept that and own it. You don't yeah. do it, I don't, you can't complain about it. That's your, get accepted and that's your, that's your advice. And that's so true. And I tell that to my daughters in particular about being specific. And, you know, you, they're younger. When I was younger, of course, I thought differently. But now that I'm older, ooh, that's word. That's scripture. Woo! Right. Um, I think, <laughs> I'm thinking right. differently. So like you, I'm like, okay, where are you in your life? Are you still doing behaviors that and I, I don't even know that I know this person. Are I'm you asking me? Are this. the children no, on no. here? Are you asking me? Am I sexual? No, I am not. We talked Ooh. about that celibacy. So we talked about celibacy. I believe that Who that's asked important. About that? Well, when you talked about it off camera, we talked about celibacy, and I we talked about that being important uh, because at this age, and it wasn't always important in my life. Let me just keep it real. I'm mm -hmm. gonna like being visible. It was not always important in my life, but. At this age, again, from learning, I, the people I used to deal with, I used to say to myself, I wonder why I feel this way when I'm with this person. Mm. Ah. Mm. Right. So ah. we have to be mindful and careful of the relationships that we have. And I'm just going to leave that right there. You know what? I'm glad you said that. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, we about, we about to uncover some things. But you know, keeping it real, and keeping it real, thinking, thinking from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And I, I've shared this with my daughters because I think it's important for them to know they're in their. Oh my gosh, they're in their twenties. Yeah. But for them to understand that when you are sexually active with somebody 
that person and that spirit and stuff connects you to them. That's why some people can't get over other people because it's, it, I don't know if it's soul ties, strongholds. I don't know what it is. Uh -huh. I think we talked about walking around in, in the daytime with a flashlight. <laughs> I don't remember that. What you mean? Okay. Yeah, I think we talked about that. Walk around daytime with flashlight. That's what I call it. I said, because we can get so tied into someone and you're like, I don't know why I feel this way about this person, but you know that they're not good for you. Yeah. Nothing about the relationship is good for you. You're miserable during this whole, and we probably all can share that we have either ourselves or have friends. They are just simply just miserable. And yeah. I'm not trying to be miserable the the, the latter years the last of my life. Part of your life. Be happy. No, find some exactly. happiness. Even yeah. If it's just a, yeah. Find a piece of happiness, please, people. Please, please. <laughs> it's a piece of happiness. <laughs> so, man, it's just saying, get right. yourself some business. But get, get yourself happy. Get yourself right in the part too, because you don't want to be a hot mess for somebody else. That's the <laughs> right. Part. Okay. Right. Let me see. Um, so Leonard agrees. And yeah, so, you know, being, knowing where you are, knowing what you want in life, whether it's a relationship, whether it is financially, retirement, your home, uh, travel, because I love to travel. So my children and I are going to be traveling, you know, we're going to, we're going somewhere this summer. Um, but those types of goals are important. And I don't believe that in repeating history, so they're definitely, I can't water myself down because of a hangup that somebody else has. So you got to take me for right. who I am, all of me, right? all of my, uh, what is that song by John Legend? All of my oh, perfect imperfections. Perfect, perfect imperfections, right? Yeah. We're all imperfect people. That's why I said, it's not a, you know, that you're, you, you have this dream person but they have to be perfectly aligned with you. Exactly. Yeah. In all areas and majority of them. I mean, everybody is their individual person, but yeah. Don't walk around yeah. with, in the daytime with the flashlight. That's all. <laughs> you know what? We could go into a whole <laughs> nother conversation about relationships. And you know what? I'm going to save that for another time because I think when it comes to relationships, I think men need to be opened up and, and invited to that conversation because you should. It, it takes more than just the woman to have her opinion and her views. I think it takes that man to bring their perspective as well because when mm -hmm. you are able to communicate and understand, that's, ooh, that's what we're going to do. Okay, I have to come up with something and figure out who, who to invite. But that is so critical. Mm -hmm. um, married couples, they have a good perspective, but then also when you're single, you have a perspective too, because there's a reason why you are single, whether by choice or others. Absolutely. Uh, now so, I've been, yeah, cause I've been engaged. I just, my friends, you say, I just don't go through it. The Lord has just saved that person just from me. <laughs> I say that they would say, <laughs> I would say I was being saved at the time God was saving them for me because I was not ready. And we have to own that part too. Yeah, I think and I think people are they become they fall in love with the idea of being in love, but or, not really afraid to be alone. Yeah, that could be it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Some people just have to have someone say that they have someone there, whether they're good for them or not. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, uh, mm, I'm a hush. Okay, so on that note, because <laughs> I was about to go in. On All that right. note, we're going to save go that for another conversation, another topic. Um, in the future, we're going to wait until we get through some other stuff, and then we're going to come back with this light and fluffy relationship and just be prepared for whoever God has in store for Whoever, yeah, we we gonna touch on relationships later. Something you um, said, something you said to me, kind of stuck to me, and because I'm a word person, we had a offline conversation. And if you are preparing to find you some married friends, yep, don't let all your friends be single. Just find you some married friends too. <laughs> Birds of a of feather flock together. So if you're in the space of married people. 
you might find right. yourself so you get some, being some married too. Right. Get get that right. wisdom. Especially that wisdom. the ones who've been married for a long time and they still love each other and they still like Absolutely. each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, I have a, a friend who uh um I think they've been married for over 30 years. But they still have like they still dance in the living room together. See, that's, that's what I'm talking about. And she still, and they're older because she's in the 60s and he's in the 70s. So this is the second marriage for him, but her first. But okay. just the way that she talks about him, it's obvious that you really do love him. I mean, and he obviously loves, I mean, because I hear the stories over and over and over and over again, but I don't mind hearing them because it's obviously that they love each other. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So y'all stay tuned. Oh, wait, wait, let me go back. Um, so JR said, many men have robbed women from their first love with Christ. Ooh, that's pretty good. Get your first love established. That's why so many are messed up in the marriages and sex life and mental emotions. Ooh. And Leonard replied, so true. Okay, then you missed, I missed the first half hour. Um, but I remember, yeah, no problem. And I see Tia's watching. Yes, Leonard, blessings come with your good thing. This is going to be good, this topic of our relationship. <laughs> I already see your mind. I, I've been, I, I, I'm starting to learn you. Yeah, y'all y'all created something with her right now. She is, yeah, she's on something. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I do, and I'm I'm gonna write it down as soon as we get off. And I'm I have my book, my planner of all of the show topics and who. So yeah, if you're if anybody who's watching this now or you're watching it after the broadcast is ended, if you're interested in being on a panel discussion for single women and single men, please let me know, inbox me because I wanna plan this because these are conversations that need to be had. Right. So yeah, I got some things you turning. Learn something. I mean, I mean, I, I, I was, I'm active with my singles group at my church. Uh huh. And you, I mean, well, we haven't because of COVID. So I kind of missed that interaction, but you i've learned i've learned a lot about me that's why i'm holding myself accountable for a lot of the wrongness that went into those relationships because you have mm -hmm. to, i would agree with jr you have to start be in love with christ first you gotta know how to love and allow him to love you yeah yeah that's i'm glad you said that and we'll talk about it but that was one of my issues i didn't like who i was I believe that you know everything was my fault and I didn't it took me it took me a while to and I, I shared if you've heard my um uh, sort of testimony when I was a part of the leadership experience with the fair consulting group which I'm still connected to mm -hmm. I remember walking I was in this parade and I was walking and it was like we had gotten to like the halfway point but I saw the end and it was something about knowing that I was going almost at the end. And it something just spoke to me. It was like, I like me. I like me. Do you uh -huh. like, me? I like me? And girl, I was like, ooh. And that spoke it to me. Good. And I was like, right? It did. It was something. It was, it was like I saw the end and I was able to move forward and I was able to love myself. I didn't condemn myself anymore. I loved who I was, I loved who I was becoming, but it took me a long time before I got to that point. So again, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't love yourself, you cannot expect for anybody to love you. You should love everything about you, your perfect imperfections like John Legend said, because if you don't, you cannot expect to be loved because you don't even know how to love yourself. So how can you expect to for somebody to know how to love you? Amen. Anyway, I done got up on the table. Amen and hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So single right. ladies, all the single ladies, all the single right. men. If you are interested and if you know somebody who needs to be a part of this panel discussion, let them know. Have them contact me. Did you see that? 
No, I stopped, but you back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, some see that see there as soon as you start walking and doing something that you know need to be done here come the little that's, black dots and stuff a, so anyway not gonna work, right we're not gonna even look we're gonna keep going right. no weapon so want to get me oh, right <laughs> Crawford, uh, hey peggy libby um oh, stephanie yeah, said yes that's... i had to relearn re like me the woman i am i yeah, know that's, that's right that's my sister yeah. No way! Uh, yeah, uh, Crawford. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you are so. Girl, I, you? girl, just love me for who I am. Right, <laughs> right, and yeah, that's cool. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Yes. So we're going to wrap up. Thank you again, whoever, everybody for for everybody who has tuned in. Again, this singles thing is going to be off the chain. And it's going to be good and you're going to be blessed and you're going to grow and it's going to be life-changing you just hold on to that i ain't lying right if you are just tuning in and we have concluded the live broadcast or you're listening to this you can also find this you'll be able to find the podcast on um SoundCloud stories with Keishan and on YouTube, this is going to be put up in a week or so. But again, share this with somebody. If you if you've been blessed by this, or if you know somebody who's single, male or female, and they need to be connected with this conversation that we're going to be having, and I don't know when, but just bring yourself, pull yourself in now so that when it's time, you are ready to go and hit the ground running and we can just talk about and hash out some things and grow together. Again, my name is Keishan, Story with Ke Stories with Keishan. Tasha, once again, how can somebody reach out to you if they want either your book or they want to learn more about your um, Leveled Up or just want to reach out to you and maybe have you come and speak at one of their events? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, okay, okay. Um, my book is on Amazon, um, A Winning Season. Um, you can find it under my name, Tasha Crawford McLaughlin. Um, you can also log on A Winning Season Life, which is my webpage um, that has my contact information, um, information about my book, and, and information about services that we offer. And it also has my blog, as well as my YouTube channel for my Winning Wednesdays. <laughs> oh, I love it. So that's tomorrow. So just be looking for her. Follow her on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and all of the other social media platforms. Tasha, you have been a blessing to me. You have been a blessing to others. I love your energy and you just by sharing your testimony, somebody I know is going to, they're going to get up and move. They, they need they're going to gonna move. move. They're going to move. Amen. Amen. Okay. So thank you again for tuning in and catch us next week. And actually Robin Wilson will be joining us next week. She's going to talk about her journey. She, I'm, I'll, I'll tease it a little bit more as we get closer to it. But nonetheless, thank you again for tuning in. God bless and have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.